Alright, so in this video I thought I'd do something a little different. I get a lot of questions and requests about routing MIDI signals in digital audio workstations and specifically with effects like spiral or the finger. So I figured I'd make a quick video that showcased how to use both of these ensembles um, in the same Ableton project. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is load an instance of Reactor into the first MIDI track and load up a instance of Spiral inside that. You can find Spiral inside the New Editions Sequencer folder. And I'm just going to load up a preset and we can close that. And we can get rid of these audio tracks that start with a new Ableton project. They're not going to use them for anything. And the next thing I'm going to do is add a synthesizer to trigger with uh, Spiral. And for those of you who don't know, Spiral is a MIDI sequencer, so it doesn't create any sound on its own, and we need to give it a synth to control. So I just added this new instance of Massive to its own track. It's not in the same track as Spiral, and I'll just load up a preset to use. And the next thing we want to do is to turn on the input and output routing, which you can find on the right side over here. And that's going to give us the MIDI from and audio to options. And so from for the MIDI from options in the massive track, we can set the MIDI to come from spiral and make sure you set it both menus so that they're getting MIDI from reactor and not from the MIDI track itself which won't work and finally we want to set the monitor of the massive track to be in like so Alright, so as you can hear, the generative sequence coming out of Spiral is triggering the MIDI notes for our copy of Massive. So the next thing I want to do is add a copy of the finger to come after Massive and glitch out the synth sound that we have. So to begin, I'm going to duplicate our instance of Spiral and we're going to use the second instance of Spiral to control the glitch effects of our copy of the finger. And once we've done that, we can load up a instance of Reactor FX. Make sure you don't use the normal reactor here or it simply won't work at all. All right, and we're going to use this copy of Reactor to hold our instance of the finger. And the finger takes a minute to load, so let's just be patient. And there we go. And we'll just select a preset out of our list here. All right, so now we want to route our data from the second spiral instance into our copy of the finger. However, you can see that our MIDI from options are all used up in our track here. So what we're going to have to do is create what's called a dummy MIDI track. So right click and create a new MIDI track. And I'll just rename it dummy for fun. And then what we can do is route the output of our second spiral instance. Let's name that spiral 2 so we can tell them apart. 
So we'll route that into our dummy track. And then um, since we have no audio with this MIDI track, we also get a MIDI out function. So we can route that to um, our massive track, but make sure you select Reactor FX as the actual destination. And now we can use this second instance of Spiral to control our instance of the finger, like so. So with a little bit of effort, you can actually get some pretty great sounds doing really simple generative stuff like this using Ableton as kind of a glue to hold all your projects together. And I'm just going to add a really quick, simple drum beat here um, to play underneath our glitched out synth sound. Alright, so over the course of making this video, I also discovered a strange bug or flaw in the programming of Spiral that causes it not to work properly in Ableton if it's not visible. And so I just want to show a quick example of how that can work. So over the course of these videos, I've kept these visible, but you can close them by clicking the little X in the upper right hand corner. And if you do, you'll see that the spiral instances are no longer triggering any notes and the synth line will not play. And you see the instance that I set it to visible, the synth line starts playing again. So that's just something to watch out for. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. See you next time.